So welcome everyone. Welcome everyone. Uh, we we would, like to, we would like to start our uh, power panel discussion without any more. Uh, you know, without we wouldn't want our audience to wait any more. Uh, so I would now like to begin by welcoming everybody, my wonderful audience, to our webinar called Survival of the Fittest, where we have uh, brought together experts from the field of fashion and luxury to speak their mind on the way forward during these times. We wouldn't want to call it COVID times anymore because I think we are now slowly, slowly beginning to unlock and accept, you know, things in a positive way. So I'm going to start by uh, welcoming all my wonderful panelists. And I'm going to start with um, uh, Falguni and Shane. So of course, everybody knows them, but Falguni and Shane Peacock are the leading luxury couture designers in our country. Their clients, some of their clients include celebrities like Beyonce, Madonna, Katy Perry, Rihanna, for those of you who don't know. Um, next is Tanya Ghavri leading celebrity stylist, creative consultant. She is also the co-founder of the popular exhibition, Dhoom Dham Weddings. I'm sorry, guys, I would request all the panelists when I'm introducing you just to wave out to the audience yes. so that they know that I'm introducing you. Um, thank you so much. Next is um, Sheetal Mafatlal. She's a pioneer who was instrumental in bringing international luxury brands into India. She is best you. described as luxury star. Sheetal, if you can just say hi to the uh, audience, that would be great. Next is um, Namrata Soni, one of the most coveted makeup, in, uh, makeup artists in the industry and in our country. Namrata's long list of celebrity clients. I mean, if I start talking, I'll probably keep talking throughout the, throughout the day. So um, last but not the least, we have Bhavna Jastra, who has also put this webinar together. She's curated this webinar for us. So thank you so much, Bhavna, for bringing everybody together. And Bhavna, of course, is India's premier live casting artist. Welcome, Bhavna. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining me. And I would like to begin uh, you know, with my questions. Um, my first question um, is to all of you, please feel free to, you know, uh, you know, put in, you know, step in between and, you know, uh, comment and talk as you please. So my first question is, the right people and skill set are very important for the growth of any brand. What kind of domino effect did you face with regards to your employees at the grassroots level, like daily wage earners, artisans and staff hired by your company, your brand? Um, and what is your take on basically taking care of the needs of the you know people at the grassroots level um, how are you managing this within your brand and within your organization so wh whoever wants to you know start uh, with their with their answer i can see uh, shane wants to i <laughs> think <laughs> the consequences of the domino effect was uh, we all faced it worldwide worldwide you know the entire world faced it and what we face in India and in Mumbai predominantly in our field is most of the artisans and the skilled labor left and went to their villages, you know. So I think that was the biggest uh, 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 domino effect that we faced. So, you know, I, I would uh, quite agree with Shane because, uh, you know, I'm also a casting artist and uh, we actually, very similar to Shane and Falguni, we employ what we call skilled but uneducated labor. So whether it's the karigars or whether it's, you know, the casting artists that I have, the sculptures that I involve, they are all very skilled, but they are uneducated. And this labor essentially comes from different states and not really predominantly Maharashtra. So when, uh, you know, this uh, COVID uh, crisis happened and, you know, all the migrant laborers decided that, you know, they want to go back to their villages and they'll be better off there for whatever reason best known to them, there was a huge exodus. And now that we are trying to, you know, put our feet back on the ground and trying to bring business back, we obviously have to put our production in place first before we even think of, you know, uh, getting back to marketing and things like that. And I personally realized that a lot of my important, uh, you know, key labor 
were still in the villages and to get them back and convince them that you know things are proper because most of them lived in you know areas where they had rented their places and they didn't even own their own houses so you know coming back saying okay abhi hamara ghar bhi nahi hai and we need to so you know a lot of small trivial issues yeah managing your brand and managing your labor oh, absolutely uh, shayan and falguni won't you agree with me that we are all facing this of them even coming back and you know even putting things together for ourselves i think they are really scared to come back now at this point and it was the kind see i think for the first two months they never got to go back the minute everything opened up they ran back and they are like now we won't come back for the next 6 months you know yeah so that is the effect because you know uh, there are weddings happening and and slowly weddings will happen and you know india is the industry i mean india's wedding industry is the biggest and uh, you know not having laborers enough laborers to complete the orders is going to be a task now mm. you know so like our strength from 100% has come down to 30% Yes. Less than that, actually. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, it's not really about getting back on your feet with, you know, sales. If we have mm-hmm. to first get back on our feet by putting production together, and yeah. then look at the sales. Because if we get the sales, they'll probably come. But if we are not able to deliver on time, and we are not able to deliver up to the standards that we people are used to getting from us, then that's going to be another big challenge that we will face. Exactly. Yeah. Sure. yeah. i could see you know namrita and uh, tanya as well uh, nodding their heads and of course like agreeing with the rest of the panel <laughs> would you like to add something i mean in terms of i'm sure you both also work a lot with you know uh, different kinds of labor staff at, at, you know in your respective fields is there any particular challenge that you have been facing that you want to share with the audience go on tanya we cannot hear you tanya Yeah. Um, I feel uh, in terms of me, of course, the time. So can't hear her. No, no, no. You are not audible. You are not audible. I think there's a problem with your with your mic. Namrata, would you want to maybe continue? Yeah, sure. So I think uh, what happened with uh, the makeup industry was that a lot of our uh, makeup artists are from Mumbai, luckily, but we do have a very big influx of people from the other cities. And the minute the lockdown happened, people were able to take flights back and go home. So I have a whole part of my team which is from Bangalore or Chennai or Delhi, which actually went back home, and they haven't been able to come back to Bombay. Um, I've it's taken me a long time, it's still taking me a long time to convince them to come back to even assist. I have already started shooting, so for me, um, it's very very hard to find the you know the right kind of. Uh, assistants who i have trained and put in so much effort into training sure. to come and assist me to the level that i need so it's been a little bit hard but uh, people are you know willing to come back but again there's so, such a big scare because cases are just increasing by the day mm. and uh, even though production houses are taking a lot of care and they're being very careful mm. you know uh, instead of having 50 people on a photo shoot we have 15 people on a photo shoot which makes a huge difference to us but it is very very difficult to actually work with the ppe kits like i've done six shoots and out of that for three of them i wore my ppe suit and it was extremely difficult so honestly hats off to you know our doctors and the frontline workers for what they're going through because honestly i didn't even i i couldn't breathe you know i felt exhausted i felt tired within 6 to 7 hours of shooting non stop mm-hmm. and uh, we normally in this industry shoot for a minimum of 18 hours i think tanya you know will know what i'm talking about and it's extremely hard so i mean hats off to them and you know my i salute them every single day when i'm going to work but uh, things have to go back to normal people are coming back but it's going to take a little bit more time for things to go back to complete normal i think but um um you know for me what i've done is that i've done a lot of online stuff to support the people who have been part of my uh, life in terms of my assistants or people who work with me so uh, being lucky enough to be able to do online classes and online webinars and online uh, training i've managed to collect a lot of uh, you know money and donate that so that has been one thing that has worked in my favor and uh, i thank god for that Great. That's wonderful. Tanya, do you want to add something because we lost you back then? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfectly. Yeah. 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 Uh, 
so i mean uh, i think you know of course in terms of um, styling since the lockdown happened i think for bollywood and i think namrata will agree and so will everyone else agree for the first two months there was absolutely nothing happening for anybody right we were all figuring out what to do or uh, what is the next step etc but i think by the time june happened uh, you know obviously everyone started thinking that okay this is going to go on for a bit longer let's figure out what is the way forward and of course um, a lot of migrant laborers uh, laborers and a lot of people that work for a lot of designers were all going back to their villages so i of course i am a stylist and not so many shoots are happening but besides being a stylist i also have a company which is called uh, the dhoom dham company i and i do these exhibitions and i was slated to do four of them this year uh, which obviously i had to cancel because they were all kind of offline exhibitions and we've kind of taken it online now but that had its own challenges because a lot of the designers like falguni and chain said that because they don't have that big either they don't have that bigger team anymore or you know for mm-hmm. some reason a lot of the designers that were working with their production team uh, you know or their or um, a lot of their offices are in like containment zones you know so they can't go to the office productions become slower so we have had to deal with all of this stuff you know so obviously things are uh, like how you, need, you you know every year you have timelines for everything this year you need to understand that timelines will have to be pushed a little bit because it's just how it's going to be you know and you're going to have to work, every day is a new day and you have to work with it and you cannot um, i think that you need to be a bit more flexible this year and understand that if something needs to be pushed by a week 10 days 2 weeks 3 weeks it's just how it's going to be and we're going to have to take each day as it comes yeah absolutely have a more yeah. approach and everything she yes. does want to ask sorry sorry yes yes falguni no 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 let's let's uh, outfits we've done with tanya overnight literally overnight i think yeah. all of us have to wait now because it takes yeah, minimum 10 days. days you remember we would put like 50 people on an outfit and get it yeah. done in one night now yeah. we don't even have 30 people <laughs> <laughs> Sheetal, would you like to add something to uh, what everybody else mentioned about about the COVID situation? I think I would say from a position, privileged position, because we work from home, so I haven't had to face what everybody else has faced. I think I would consider myself lucky from that perspective. Though no one wants to be confined, and it is difficult to to stay confined, and you know when travel was predominantly part of my work, mm-hmm. and to be restricted from that perspective, because even travel today is something that we don't know uh, anything about. It could uh, be locked down today, tomorrow. It's all kind of in the air. but yes i know uh, shane and falguni's work so i can imagine that those outfits which got ready in like 2 hours 1 hour and was delivered mm-hmm. at high speed is going to be a problem yeah. and we don't even know where to wear them anymore uh-huh. exactly <laughs> so hopefully we'll find a place to wear it soon so i mean i'm now moving moving from the topic of covid we want to talk more about what's going to happen next you know what's what's your survival tactic what are you thinking what's your mindset uh, where do you want to take this you know you know going forward which direction is your brand heading so with that thought in mind i want to ask my next question particularly to falguni and shane both of you um as a brand you know when you talk about survival tactics given the times um will you consider revamping accessible price points reflecting the reduced spending power of many people globally due to the you know the pandemic that would have passed but do you think that going forward you would have to maybe be a little bit more flexible with your price points or you know any kind of strategy or any kind of new uh, measures you know that you'll adopt to uh, make some changes in your brand to um, kind of you know get things back on track so what is going to be your survival tactic going forward for your brand I think at Falguni Chain Peacock, we always uh, strive to make a great product. We've never compromised on quality. 
and uh, you know just to make the price go low now we are going to compromise on quality i think that that is one thing which how we need to people not do that and uh, as far as kutyo uh, right now i think going forward is going to turn out more expensive because the labor has gone back in yeah. the world. so considering all that i don't think that we are going to make any profit just to make the people you know just to make it cheaper i think we are going to continue strive on making a great outfit quality product and we do have different in our uh, product offering also so if uh, if any comes in we have different price ranges we have different products we have track we have diffusion we have uh, semi procure we have procure you know so i'm sure there is someone who walks in work will find something in their price point but to make our product cheaper i don't think we will do that right. i don't think I couldn't yeah. agree more with Ashwin on this point. At moment. this point, the situation is such that you know there are few weddings, right? Yeah. Not few weddings is happening. And couture, a person who will come to buy couture is never going to ask you, like, okay, do you have like a little cheaper or a little less price couture outfit? They're never going to ask. Of course. They still want that outfit, and, and considering that, like right now, everyone's gone back. All the skilled labor. Really Paper is not here. Whatever we will make will be really, really, you know, expensive. Will be very detailed. So, and it will be one of a kind. So, if we were to make twenty outfits earlier, we are not going to make more than five for your outfits. You know. In fact, if it, in fact, if I may say so, your approach will be less is more. Less is more. focus on the lesser things, but. more perfection more attention to detail and catering more to your loyal clientele of course because your loyal and, clientele will never want the most important thing is keeping the quality in, 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 yeah totally absolutely absolutely and i mean I, i get it of course it's a challenge because with the kind of you know the situation happened with the laborers of course mm-hmm. most of the indian brands could your brands are dependent on that so the idea would be to retain them to you know keep doing good quality work with them so definitely that makes a lot of sense um you know thank you so much for that and for you know sharing that with the audience um i would like to ask my next question to namrata um namrata if you can hear me um clients are being very observant about the precautions their beauticians and makeup artists need to take and i mean you already mentioned about skin suits but for example all products would be need, needed to scoop out and maybe use separately in sanitized plates leading to maybe higher expenses for you as an artist um, many individuals have shifted to doing their own makeup and are embracing this trend do you think that this could be a potential threat for makeup artists globally oh no i'll tell you honestly i mean all the women out here i'm sure will agree with me that sheetal tanya palguni everybody including you and bhavna that you will do your makeup a few times because you don't have a choice but given a choice you'll want someone to come and get you ready when things get better because it is extremely cumbersome to sit and do your own makeup so i don't think there's a threat but i think uh the one positive that has happened because of um sanitization has been that the 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 level of cleanliness and sanitization in our industry in general mm-hmm. has gone up a lot mm-hmm. like i remember when i used to go to work and there would be another makeup artist uh, maybe not a, not from somebody from my team but somebody else and i would see their table and i would see their brushes and i would see their makeup and i would be aghast because i've been trained my entire life to keep everything absolutely sanitized at all times so we sanitize between every single client and every single day when we go home that has been part of my regime from the beginning of time so um you know it's uh, it's not changed for me but expenses it will become more expensive in terms for the younger artists because you have to now change your puffs and your sponges you have to mm. the more you sanitize your brushes with alcohol 99 the faster they will deteriorate and get spoiled wow. uh, so all those expenses are definitely going to increase for the artists uh, and answering your question in terms of pricing uh, people are asking for lower prices but you know like falguni and chain said that if they love what you do they're not going to ask you to come down on your price and uh, so far i think the only area that i have faced that um you know issue has not been the bridal market actually it's been the 
uh, you know, the industry. It's been Bollywood and it's been, uh, you know, the, where we're doing our photo shoots, the brands. So the brands are asking us to come down and uh, what's happening is that the production houses are kind of calling you up and asking you to give a rate, a better rate for them and competing with each other. So mm. that's kind of getting you, sorry for my language, very badly screwed and stuck because you might give a really good rate to one uh, production house, not realizing it's the same shoot for another one. So it just makes sense to stay put with what your charges are because it's going to come back and bite you on your ass at some point. So it's better to just, you know, be truthful as to what you want to charge and stick to your guns. Of course, come down a little bit because that's what the times are calling for. But don't come down so much that people are going to take you for a ride and take you for granted. No, and I think that, uh, you know, one thing to what she said is that at the end of the day, if you are in whatever industry you are, but you're dealing with luxury and you're on top of the game, you're anyway at a price point, which is, uh, you know, higher than what is being offered around. Because that's why, you know, you are in the niche that you are in the luxury bracket. And now with the production going down, you know, if what we could handle, like Shane and Falguni said, if we could do 15 outfits, now we can do five. And the same goes for me. If we could do around, you know, say 50 art pieces a month, now we will be able to churn out maybe 25 to 30. And if we don't want our quality to go down, but we want to deliver things up to par because we have a brand name to protect. We have a brand that we, you know, people perceive us to be where we are. That's not only going to be a challenge, but like Namrata said, we have to stay with our price points. Things have become expensive with us. So even if we are not thinking of maybe increasing our prices exponentially, there will be a certain premium which will now have to be added, uh, you know, if we have to deliver quality up to that level. I'm sure everybody agrees with this. Well, I'm already getting a lot of nods from the audiences because oh, you're yes. sending messages. And why I I do do it. Because we, we really, all of us, all of us, we really put in our best and we don't compromise on anything, whether it's our, you know, our effort, whether it's our, uh, uh, you know, uh, our uh, things that we do produce our produce or whatever. So at the end of the day, people have to appreciate that quality always comes with the price. Sheetal, sorry, you wanted to say something. Particularly, yes, particularly with things like makeup, you know, when uh, you have somebody like Namrata doing makeup for you, they know your face, they know how to enhance your, the way you look. So it's very difficult to find a replacement and I think people always pay that extra even if if they feel that you know we should be saving because of market situations and circumstances they would still pay for a person like Namrata to do their makeup because it would be a compromise people don't realize it but when it's done on your face then you realize it absolutely absolutely Thank you. So uh, we all, we also have a new uh, member joined us, uh, you know, who's joined us for the for the webinar. Tia, I would like to introduce uh, Tia to everybody. Tia, if you can just say a hello to your audience. Hi guys. Tia is an 18 year old student, and she has launched her new edition of her own Instagram enterprise called We Sort You, where she has listed several luxury and artisanal vendors. So I think kudos to you on that, uh, Tia, for doing mm. such a wonderful job and for bringing so many brands together on one single platform. Uh, having said that, uh, I want to ask you as well a, a question because I think a lot of our audiences are young youngsters and you know young people like yourself. Um, so we want to ask you this question that we are aware that you are starting with a new venture in the times when many other businesses are finding it very tough. And as you said, you know, all our panelists spoke about how tough it is these days. What motivated you for launching this business? And do you feel that, you know, companies that are already listed will agree to partner up with you considering that you are, you are, you know, still a fresher in the market. So firstly, tell us what motivated you to start this new venture. Um, well, honestly, um, my 18th birthday just passed on the 23rd of July and I really wanted to do something special and I was very sad by the fact that I wouldn't be able to have all my friends there and I wouldn't be able to do something to the scale that I wanted to do. Um, but I, when I thought of it, I was like, I can still have all the fun in the world and have a party with stuff completely unique to me. And when we started thinking of elements that a party involves, we were thinking the balloons, the decor, the food. And when you think of all these different aspects, um, you have to find vendors for them that can 
um, that are unique because um, you want a party like no other. And I think that was the main motivation behind starting this enterprise, that everyone can have a party completely unique to them with all the diverse vendors that we verified so that they can choose from them. So, yeah. And have you also been able to get a lot of brands uh, to support you, to tie up with you? We have, we have, and we're very excited to show you um, some of the people that have come on board with us because it's a lot more than just party stuff. It's like home chefs. We've got um, a lot of like gourmet food people on board. So we're very excited. That's, for that. that's yeah. great. Congratulations on this and all the best to you. Uh, we also would like to very, very quickly uh, welcome uh, Mr. Samir uh, Srivastav, who is the CEO of, of Jean-Claude Beguin Salons, a uh, very prominent name in the fashion industry. Hey. Welcome. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you guys loud and clear. Okay, great. And we would also like to take this opportunity to thank you, Samir, for being our gift sponsor. Uh, oh, that's okay. I mean, <laughs> nothing, nothing big that you're telling me. I think... Uh, uh, I've been listening to the to the panelists for the last uh, 30 minutes ever since this whole thing started. Hi, everybody. We, I think have, the are, yeah. we have a question for you as well, which I think along sure. with me, all of the other ladies are very, very interested in knowing. So, okay. of course, um, it's been a month now since the salons have started, uh, started after the lockdown. I yes. mean, how are you coping up with the staff, the clients, the services? I mean, there are so many things that I'm sure you need to be taken care of. So, how are you coping up? you know, during these times. Sure, sure, sure. So, so I'm, not, I'm not going to take you guys through boring stuff for PPE and I'm going to tell you something very, very real. Sure. Uh, it's been about 30 days since we've completed operations in Bombay. We're primarily a Bombay-based brand. And uh, of course, we've got operations in Bangalore also, but they're very small in numbers. Bombay is where uh, JCB as is popularly known and loved by almost everybody, and especially the women. And uh, uh, many of them uh, who are here are our clients, esteemed clients. Uh, I've been I've been very positively uh, surprised and very very grateful and thankful to the large number of women who've been coming out and I'm speaking the truth to you, right from uh, our salons in Marine Drive till uh, till till Powai. Uh we uh, we are doing a traffic of almost about 35 40 percent and the nice part is that 70 percent of this is women, wow. which is very encouraging you know. Uh, when they come out, they, they, they're showing the gratitude, they're showing the love and they're showing the affection to all our uh, hairdressers who've been out of work. And like Namrata said, uh, all the artists who work in the salon, whether they are at uh, makeup artists or hairdresser, they've been out of work for almost three, three and a half months. What more than when a lovely client comes in and then she hugs, no, not hugs. I mean, she can virtual hug and uh, uh, thank, the, uh, thank the hairdresser and the team who's looking after her. Yes, uh, footfalls are encouraging. I see potential, uh, potentially these increasing over the next uh, 30 days. And, I, and like I was speaking to the industry panel a few days ago, uh, by Diwali, which is November, I think we should be back at about 60%. Uh, and uh, very, very thankful to the women of Bombay. Uh, they've shown great courage and to step out of their homes. We're also doing something at home. So like Namrita also said that we also have started off a home services division. It was always there for uh, us for beauty yeah. services, but uh, home at hair at home is something is also which has just begun now. And Samir, so, I can't thank you enough. And I'm sure a lot of women speak with me when we say thank you, Samir. <laughs> women really don't get up from their bed looking like this. And they need help. And thank you so much for always. Most welcome. Up. And Shane, we've got something for you and me too. Don't worry. <laughs> for the All right. Thank you very much. And you guys are welcome. And I have a nice panel thank ahead. You. Thank you for your support always. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Ethan, my next question is to you. Um, as a brand consultant, what measures and changes have you seen being adapted by multiple brands? Um, and do you feel that you know, the changes that certain brands would have adopted due to the pandemic. Do you think that those changes are going to remain? Uh, brands are going to continue working on those lines? Or, I mean, what do you foresee going ahead for luxury brands? What's, what are the next steps? Even post this situation that of COVID starting, there was already a visible shift that was technical retail to online retail. Though when online retail started, there was always a suspicion and a skepticism 
to buying things which are luxury oriented online. Yeah. But, but with COVID, that suspicion has gone away because it's become something which is the norm today. It's become a normal way to shop. And um, I think all the customers uh, have embraced uh, online as, as the new way to go forward. And in order for any brand to succeed and to continue with the certain current circumstances, but also with the world moving towards digital, it is very important to have a very strong online presence. Absolutely. And that is what I recommend for most of the brands to do. So if you see today the online platforms that uh, exist for retail, they've added service options. You know, there was the usual service option of, uh, you know, delivery option, option styling tips, product advice. But now it's the main focus that these brands should focus on is uh, augmented reality, because augmented reality gives you the option of being able to see, for example, if it's a fashion garment from Shane and Falguni, you can try it on, you know, you see it, you know what you look like. If you have accessories to add to it, you can add them, you see the way you look, everything is there on screen, a total look is there on screen without having to venture out of your home. Or if it's a product which is like a home product or a piece of art, a piece of furniture, through augmented reality, you can place that object in your home, you can place it in different places in your home and eventually choose the right place, the right proportion, and be able to buy that product without having to go back and forth a showroom and go through the entire routine of a physical uh, purchase. So sure. I think the augmented reality is going to be the new um, focus of that an online and every online brand has to have predominantly where it's going to you know help sales in the best way without physical contact the other thing that i feel that brands have to focus on is the advertising and promotion so the traditional way of advertising and promotion has always been through print media sure. and traditional billboards and ways like that. But that, that kind of advertising, for example, if you take a crore of rupees and put that into that form of advertising, you have maybe a target of 100 and you reach a 10 to 15% target because it's not specific. Today with online and everything being online and the algorithms that are present online, advertising has also become extremely specific to the client because through the algorithms, it's everybody knows, you know, there's a customer profile, what you're Googling, what you're following, which social media platform you're on, what you're looking at you know, ads that interest you, ads that you press the cross button on. So it, it gives, gives you, it gives marketing companies and brands the ability to actually target that specific client because you're actually putting your product in front of a client that is looking for that product. So you're actually reaching 95%, I would say, of your targeted customer base as against the old traditional way where you're probably reaching maybe 10 to 15% of your targeted base. So that same budget of one CR, if you put into traditional vis-a-vis -vis putting it into online, you have a better reach to the actual target audience. And I also feel apart from the advertising and you know, the online platform services that they're offering, marketing has also changed. And marketing today, it's about 
celebrity and social media influencers with product placements onto those platforms. So products are also very visible to an actual target. And the target is, um, you know, you're following a celebrity, you're following a social media influencer, they're looking at the product, they're reviewing the product, they're showing you the product. So everything is done for you. It's a more one-on-one -on -one approach to uh, marketing. And the other way of marketing is the product placement, which is happening consistently on reality shows, on TV programs. I would, I would actually, you and you see, for example, example... Sheetal, what you said, I mean, I would actually very, very quickly, uh, because we have a little bit of a limited time, we can go on listening to you, because I think what you're saying is making so much sense. And I think we've also got a couple of messages from the audience saying that they totally 100% agree with you on the virtual reality and the you know augmented reality aspect. And as I mean, as you said, influencers, so all of you, I mean, here on this platform today are also influencers. And in many ways, you know, you are you taking a step as a brand or as an influencer will be uh, very, very inspiring for a lot of other people. So with that thought in mind, I also want to direct a, a question uh, to Tanya because I can see a couple of people from the audience asking me about, you know, hello, hi Tanya, so about styling and about virtual styling in general. Um, so Tanya, very, very quickly, I want, to, I want to ask you about virtual styling. Is that even a thing? And I mean, are you adapting? Uh, I mean, are you doing any virtual styling for celebrities or, or clients or is there, is there any, any such thing that you've done in, during this period? I mean, you know, I'm not, I am not going to lie. There have been conversations, but I think that, like I said earlier, I think it's, uh, it's something that's very new. Um, you know, I mean, as a stylist, how I work is that we, of course, we, we physically go and we try on on celebrities and you know we do fittings with them we figure out what the head to toe look is going to be and then of course we decide hair and makeup etc yeah. uh, there have been conversations about how, how everything is going to happen on zoom but i think that that whole um the whole idea that a lot of shoots promotions ad shoots film shoots haven't really started yet on full swing you know, so I think this is something that we're going to know in the maybe the next six months, how it's going to really happen. So I have a feeling that there will be uh, some virtual fittings that may start, uh, you know, uh, there will definitely be a lot of things will happen on maybe on email, on WhatsApp, you know, uh, how we used to probably carry 20, 30, 40 options for celebrities will really come down to seeing on uh, on like maybe sharing options on email or on WhatsApp and it'll come down to okay I'm only going to try these four or five options and maybe do either a FaceTime fitting or you know if it comes to a point where our teams are definitely going to be smaller the styling team will get smaller I it could just be me maybe one assistant meeting a celebrity so definitely like Namrata said as well we used to have shoots with 50 people now it's going to be 15 people maybe even 10 people uh, so yeah I think I think the whole virtual fitting thing or the virtual styling thing is something that has not yet started full swing but i am feeling that in the next six months we will see some of it happening but i think that um, but i think that uh, it will uh, i think we will eventually maybe a couple of months later we're all hoping that things do go back to normal so i'm really hoping that we don't have to uh, i mean i i really enjoy my job when i'm actually with a client and i'm seeing them and i'm chatting and it's a creative process that I would love to see the people that I'm styling and work with them one to one. So I'm hoping that it doesn't become a permanent thing. <laughs> yeah. We all are. Really, we all are. Yes. I mean, I, I also want to quickly, you know, ask uh, Shane and Falcony and uh, Navita to, uh, you know, like kind of chip in on that aspect of virtual fittings or virtual shoots. You know, what are I, your thoughts? Because I think uh, since we are we exception. Sorry. <laughs> uh, since we've always embraced uh, technology to our brand, uh, I think for virtual styling, virtual designing, we have this feature on our website a year back. Mm. A lot of brides of ours who stay 
maybe in Hong Kong or US or South Africa or Singapore, they, most of them can't travel to India. So we have a section on our website called Virtual Styling and Designing, where the client goes, they feed in the color, exactly what they're looking out for, you know, and they send it to us. Then we look at it, we put in our fashion correspondent to that, and then they take it ahead, you know. So we have been doing this almost a year back. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Namrita, what about you? I mean, when you talk about virtual shoots, how, I mean, how, I mean, is that even a thing or would, would that even be a thing for you? I don't, I don't think virtual shoots will happen. I mean, I'm Janice, I'm giving directions to my uh, actors or my models on how to do their makeup. But uh, what I did do during the lockdown was I created my own filter so you can experience Namrita Sony's makeup. Oh, wow. And you can then realize what you're missing out in life and book me. <laughs> Not really. I just did it for fun. I just wanted to create something that people will enjoy sitting at home. Uh, you know, uh, these times have been so difficult to so many people out there. And um, I just wanted to create something which would add a little bit of fun to our lives. So I created filters which of looks that I've created in the past, which have been iconic for me personally. And um, I think that... Uh, anything virtual in terms of makeup is going to be very hard but yes you will be able to try on how something can look on you before buying it that has already been around for a few years actually and where you can actually uh, you know it's a video app where you can go and see how smoky eyes or how the particular color will look on you and you can accordingly buy it which I think a lot of the platforms are going to incorporate into their um, into their platforms now like Nika and Sephora and all of them Absolutely. Uh, I can see a lot of questions coming from the audience as well. So I would also like to maybe open up, uh, you know, this, the space to the audience to maybe ask us questions and maybe we can take three to four questions from the audience as well. If you, if you all, uh, uh, you know, are okay with that, because the audience want, is really uh, impacting and sorry. I also want to end it up with uh, saying that shopping is an experience, you know, Absolutely. I've seen most of the brides or the sister of the bride or the mother of the bride all uh, coming to the stores. They want that experience. They want to try it on. They want to try on 50 other outfits. They want to ask the mother out looks. They want the sister's opinion. They want their fathers to come in and say there's a color suit them. I think this experience, you don't get it online. You know? yeah. Like I, in fact, we've been almost open about a month and a half. You know, there's so many people who have come to the store and yeah. they're thank god we wanted this you know seeing outfits on whatsapp and seeing outfits on mail on on your website or instagram instagram yeah. didn't give us exactly what the feel is you know so i think uh couture at the end of the day is an experience that uh that uh, everyone uh, enjoys during especially when buying an outfit for themselves i think i completely agree i mean luxury and even the the, the, the service industry, it's all about touch. It's all about the touch and feel. So that's not there, then uh, it's a, there's a huge component missing. So of course, uh, definitely. So I want to now take, take maybe two or three questions from the audience as well, because our audience has been very, very patient. And I, of course, want to ask a um, few questions to you all. Um, so there is this very, very interesting question uh, coming from Hitesh Reddy who is uh, addressing the question to actually all of you. Um, he says, uh, as leading pioneers in your respective field, I'm very much concerned about knowing the USP in understanding the customer's mindset post this pandemic, what would be your strategy? So as a, as a, you know, as a business person, managing your own businesses what is your uh, you know how will you un try to understand your consumers mindset and what would be your usp towards that and i think i would like everybody to jump in and answer this question so um, um, i'll 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 start first by answering you know everybody during this covid time has come to one realization that you know, whatever time you spend with family and whatever time you're spending safe is the most precious. So which means that when, you know, you get down to, you know, going back to your life and, <clears throat> and dealing with other things, you cannot forget what you've gone through. So everything going forward is going to seem precious. It's going to seem worthwhile and it's going to, and you're going to be thankful that you have kind of passed this, you know, tough time. 
So whatever experience we now offer, you know, whether it's in term of a product or whether it's in term of a service, we will make sure that when we offer to a client, we give our, our very best because we have we are we have all been technically survivors in a particular way. You know, whether it's uh, survivors in our business, survivors in our health, survivors in our, in our emotional health, because this has been a very trying time for everybody. We are here to offer our very best because it's going to be a fabulous new phase of everybody's life. Everything is going to seem far more worthwhile than it, it did earlier. And I'm sure the clients are going to respect that because they are also coming back to whether it's purchases or experiences, they are also coming back after a really long break. So I think there's a huge, uh, you know, positive uh, energy coming from both ends when they are meeting, not only from the provider, but also from the person who is ready to take the service or the product. So I think, I think we're heading to that. Yeah, I think that's, uh, does anybody else want to mention something? Uh, Yes, Tanya. Yeah, I think I think I'm gonna keep it very short and very um, very precise. I think the one thing that's going to happen for everybody, and I think everyone will agree with me, is that uh, your customer or your client is really now going to look for value. You know, um, and I think that is just to put it very whether it's a service industry, a designer, a makeup artist. I think that we're uh, your client will really, really, you know, I mean, they always looked for value and I think it's just going to get more. So you're going to have to give your 250%. That's all, you know. So I think that's the one thing I have to say post pandemic. I think it's really important to stay true to yourself, true to the brand, yeah. have a unique story. And that's what everyone is looking for. A unique product and a unique story is what is going to make you be apart from others and i think everyone should just continue doing what is their strength you know absolutely we have a very interesting question one more question going to sheetal and shane uh, Balguni actually uh, i'd like to ask you when does when do they think that actual physical fashion week will turn oh i want to start speaking to manish will start was, tell me the question again. I finished the other day and I when will actually uh, people start returning back to fashion shows. So, so the question was, when do you think that actual physical fashion week will return? Yes, yesterday I was speaking to Sunil Sethi from FDCI and I was asking him, so when is actually going to have shows people have come back and say, you know, and watch the show. And uh, I think we debated for quite a while half an hour and then we realized that maybe in time of now, I don't think that's going to be. I happen. don't think it's going to happen for the next 2021. Yeah. You know what, in, on an international level, I, I think a lot of the brands today and probably in a way, it may not be physical, but it has given them an ability to actually become more innovative and to have a fashion show which is not physical but it's online it's an online promotion it's digital and because it is that way they have to find a more innovative way to actually present their product and to present their show and to present their design so it's actually going to be a bigger challenge, though it's going to probably enhance everyone's creativity to be able to put that kind of a display online on, on visibility. It's like what Armani did when uh, Milan Fashion Week, you know, had to be closed down during COVID. And following him, a lot of international brands also today, like San Laurent, also is not going to have a physical show, but they still have to showcase their products. And when you have to showcase your products and you don't have that platform, you will have to double to be able to captivate an audience and to be able to captivate your uh, customer base. And I think every designer is going to have to sit down, sit down. And recreate themselves to a level where that visual <laughs> online 
catwalk is going to be more appealing than an actual physical show because that's what they're, they're actually competing against themselves. Absolutely. You agree with so yeah. Shane, you're definitely going to get there. I have no <laughs> doubts about it. <laughs> So, I mean, uh, we we also getting a lot of questions actually, Namrata, where people are asking about your filter, and they're asking me that where can we go and get this filter because we would really want to get the Namrata Sony filter. So any and I want this filter. <laughs> so you have to just uh, go onto the go onto my Instagram, and there is a little smiley face next to you know. So if you are on Instagram, so you have to just go here which is this little smiley face right there, sorry. Okay, and it shows you all my, my three filters and then you can click on it, try it and have fun. Great, thank you so much because I got at least 10, 15 messages now asking me for the filter. So I hope audience you're happy now, you can go and explore that, the filter. Uh, I now would like, you know, like some uh, uh, like parting messages, or maybe a thought, Anything that you would like to tell our audience about, uh, you know, how to tackle the next, I would say, six months uh, as a business uh, person, as an entrepreneur in your respective fields, uh, because a lot that you would say would inspire the audiences and um, a small message or a small, uh, I would say, quote or anything that you would like to share from your side uh, to the audiences on what you are going to be doing to survive in the next six months. So Sheetal, uh, Sheetal, I think I'm going to start from the top of my screen. So Sheetal, we'll start with you. Okay, and start I'm with me. I'm going to give the business advice and not the creative advice. That's fine. I so think for me, yes. well, I would advise the brands in order to be able to sustain and to keep growing post this uh, situation and to create a strong and the primary thing I would say is know your customer de demographic because you need to know who they are, where they are, and what they want. And after knowing that, you also need to know how you are going to be able to meet those expectations yeah. in the most convenient and effect cost-effective way is the first thing I would say. The second thing that I think is, that is very important in today's environment, in today's world, is the value system that a brand or any company is projecting. So when I say value, it means ethical, the ethical value, which is ethical production. It uh, means a diversity, and inclusion in the workplace. It means environmental, um, uh, env and envi to be careful with the environment, reducing the carbon footprints. And today, no brand is being spared from being judged on these factors. So no child labor, sustainability of your production, carbon footprint, and social impact. So I think these are the two, two main advices that I would give to the brand, to all brands in order to sustain and to grow for the future. Thank you so much, Peter. Bhavna, I, I think that made a lot of sense. Don't just be a, a business uh, you know, person. Think uh, consciously. I think that's a very, very strong and very, very important message. Bhavna, what about you? What would you like to tell? Um, has given very good advice on, on, the, on the business track to all of us. So I'll add a little bit of a human touch. You know, this time has been very trying on everybody. You know, whether it's been emotionally, whether it's been physically for so many, or whether it's even been financially, it's been a trying time. So coming out of this, let's all have compassion. Let's all be grateful. And let's all be thankful for whatever we have managed to, you know, uh, get during this time, come out of it safely with good health, happiness. So I think thankfulness and gratefulness going forward. And obviously, the most important thing is being positive. I think these are the three things if we take care of the rest will all pan out in its own case. Absolutely. Thank you, Bhavna. Uh, Namrata, what about you? Any message to the budding makeup artists and entrepreneurs? 
I think don't lose hope. Uh, do what you love to do. Be uh, be active on social media. media because that like sheetal said also is been around but is also a very big part of our future um stick to what you believe in like falguni and chain said like who you are don't forget who you are don't follow trends for no reason but discover who you are this is the time that you can take out to discover yourself which i think is really important i think for me covid has been um you know the best four months i've actually managed to spend in my entire life with my husband and my family because before this our lives were so hectic and i think all of us can say that we never like we were either on an aircraft or we were in a in a car going from one place to the other never really got time to spend with you know people that we loved um, putting them on the back seat all the time so i think remember who is important in your life uh, follow your dreams and just know have the patience and know that everything is going to be okay and you're going to come out on the other side shining bright thank you namrata that's such a strong and sweet message both at the same time wonderful um tanya um what about you what message would you like to give to the budding stylists and influencers so oh, i think that uh, i think now Nam- between namrata and sheetal i think uh, most of us we've covered everything that we could say to people you know sure. but i think, uh, i think one of the most important the simplest thing we can say is that i would tell people that just hang on and it is a time and it's going to pass it's not going to be forever we're all going to go back to uh, you know uh, our normal life at some point uh, this uh, pandemic is not going to last forever so i think it's very important we have very hard days and we think oh my god you know uh, you know this is never going to end i'm sure everyone's had one mental breakdown in this pandemic <laughs> but i think it's very important to remember that it's going to pass and i think for style and budding stylists i always say this is your time to really kind of a uh, deep dive into you know research read a lot of articles follow people that are super inspiring you know, look at work you no know, inspirational work world you know uh, start finding the people you want to and i think yeah just hang on and you know you as soon as things get things will start happening not i th- i think we you may losing you tanya there's a minor if um, it's a oh can you hear me now yeah yeah now now yeah, it's fine yeah so i think yeah i think this is just um, it is a, a halt onto a plans but i think i don't think it's the end of it you know so i think just hang on and like everyone said just be positive and things are going to happen again yeah and i think to just understand that there it will be a new new and you have to be uh, you have to be very welcoming to new things okay. and to a new approach yeah so that's that's what i'd like to say thank you so much for that message that's that's wonderful um last but not the least i would like falguni and shane both of you to uh, you know give a uh, give a parting thoughts to budding designers entrepreneurs there are so many people listening to you right now so what would you like to say so these last four months i think have been the most amazing months i can say is because we had targets we were just running after things which we needed to do we had a long list of things that okay 20 we are going to do this we are going to do this we are going to open stores everything had come to a standstill and i think these four months have gave us so much time to spend with our family with our daughter you know and we have sketched and we have worked on things that we are going to do in the coming five years and it's just been an amazing experience and i feel like we were just taking each day as it was coming we were and we were there for everyone who was i mean all our laborers and our team and we were doing our zoom calls and we were doing everything possible but i just felt that this was the time to i mean this is the time to stand with each other and really being grateful that we are so blessed that we are safe and and happy and you know it just that i i just think that this time was a good time for people to realize sit back and and you know dive in spiritually put your thoughts together enhance your skills yeah and and it was a good time for everyone who is just running after goals so 
sometimes plans don't work and it's okay if they don't work and life still will go on and we'll be back in 2021 everything is going to be fine i i am i'm getting such beautiful messages from the audience where they are really appreciating what all of you have said they are so happy that you were able to reinforce their thoughts and they are all saying thank you to you know all of you and they feel so much you know so much more motivated than they were before attending this webinar which i think i mean it's it says so much that you all even came together to speak to your audiences and motivated them uh, i would like to you know now maybe have everybody i think because we have to um, kind of pay a uh, tribute to the topic of this webinar survival of the fittest so i would like maybe everybody just to do a fist bump or a positive sign whatever you feel like from your side as a message to the audiences so that we can capture the moment and we can uh, kind of you know motivate your audiences as well so you can either do a fist bump or you can do a stay positive sign whatever it is that you want to um you want to uh, however you want to motivate yes so Uh, Anya, we have to request you as well, and we would uh, request uh, um, Akshay or Priyanka, please capture this beautiful moment. And um, uh, once again, like to thank all of you. Thank you to the wonderful audiences. Stay safe. Stay positive. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you so much. And I'd also like to say a big thank you to all of you to come together, you know, and 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 be a part of this webinar. I'm absolutely indebted to all of you for taking out this time and giving so much of, you know, your experiences to to our audience. Thank you very much once again. Thank you everyone. Thank you. I also want to add one more thing. Yes, thank yes, you. yes. Uh, uh, this is the time this is the time for you know so if you see someone sitting on the road please go ahead and give him some money because you know we all can look after ourselves but there are those people who definitely need our help especially if you see a stray on the road give it some water you know buy some biscuits i mean these are small small things i think so which we all need to start putting into yes, our people so this is the right time to help people in no matter how much you can in whatever way you can but please make it a point to do that absolutely thank you once again everyone thank you bhavna for putting this together thank, thank you guys bhavna shikla bye bye guys thank you bye thank you